and Siwafili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. You probably noticed that the set looks different, and that's because we're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, on the set of Native Entertainment Magazine, and I'm here with the CEO, Tito Gutierrez. How you doing? Well, I'm going to say welcome, but I'm here in your place, so. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Native Entertainment Magazine, how long has it been around? Uh, five years. This November is our fifth year anniversary. Five years. Yeah. And why Native Entertainment Magazine? What, why, what was the brainstorming behind starting that? Behind the, the wording? Behind no, the they're having a magazine. Um, you know, when, as a, I, 15 years ago, I started out as a Native um, artist, a musician. And I realized through traveling around around the country that no matter how great I sounded or, or how much I was selling, I just realized by looking at myself and my environment and looking at other artists that I was encountering, um, I realized that no matter how great they are or how great I am, the industry is always going to overlook it and be able to say, right. you're an Indian. What do I do with you? Uh -huh. you know? And so when I, when I looked at how we, my company, Res Out Incorporated, which is a record label, how we marketed ourselves was it was just primarily done online and that's how okay. everybody was doing it and i didn't really like that so what i wanted to do was give a central viewpoint so we'll fast forward to the future five years ago and now we got a magazine that we can create a central focusing point for people like models actors artists of indigenous uh, descent okay so you said res Dot oh, oh, no, Re uh, Res Dowd Incorporated. Dot in so you, you're, Dowd. you're very business-minded, I could tell. Yes. So you started out with a magazine, or you started out with something else first? No, I started out 15 years ago. I was in the military. Um, I, I have to tell the story. <laughs> so I was in the military. I was in the Army. Um, and I came home on leave one, uh, one year. <clears throat> and we were living in Shiprock. It's in New Mexico. And I... Uh, I'm, I'm a mama's boy. So I went home, we visited my mama, and I was hanging out with her, and she turned to me, and she goes, you know, son, you're the dumbest person I know. And then she turned around and walked <laughs> away from me. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here I am, I'm feeling all big-headed. I'm, I'm, I'm her baby boy, I'm in the army. Soldier boy. Soldier boy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and she tells me that, it was just a blow, and I was like, what? So she told me, she was like, well, when we were poor, and it was just the two of us. And we lived on nothing but potatoes. And we were struggling. And you didn't have nothing, no money. And you would go down to the trash dump or wherever, and you would find pieces of uh, uh, stereos. And you would piece together your recording studio. And you would mm -hmm. re record music and record people. And now that you're in the military, you have all this money. I guess people think people in the military have a lot of money. <laughs> so you're in the military now, and all you're doing is drinking it away and chasing women. And so that made me think when, uh -huh. I, when, I, when I left, I was like, man, you know what? I really am just pissing away my money. I'm not doing nothing with it. I'm, I'm, I mean. Were you raised on a reservation? Yes, whole life. Okay. So that's um, where your mom was when yeah. you went to visit her. Yeah. Shiprock is a border town on the Navajo Reservation. It's uh, just right, just exactly right, almost. Uh, if you just drive a few miles down the road, you're going to be off the reservation. So it's a border town between okay. um, right next door to 30 miles away from Farmington, New Mexico, which is the closest town or city. So your mom was a big influence, influence on you. And so then what was your first venture after that? Um, my first business venture mm -hmm. was the record label. I, uh, I'd gone back. You know, obviously, leave ended. Went, uh -huh. back, went back to normal, regular military duty. Uh -huh. And uh, so there was one other incident that catapulted it. Was in, I was in South America. We are doing some jungle warfare training. And I had, I uh, still remember his name, Sergeant Davis. Turns to me, and uh, he was all like, uh, Tito, you, need to, you should re-enlist. And I was like, why? He said, because this is the only thing you're ever going to be good at. <laughs> and I, I thought to myself, man, this is what I'm going to be good at. D d falling down hills, carrying large rucksacks, going through the, the deserts in the Middle East. This is what I'm good at. And not to disrespect anybody mm -hmm. in the military, but... I know for a fact I'm, I was born for larger, greater things. So it made me think about what my mom said, uh -huh. and I thought to myself, you know what? I must be the dumbest person in the world. If I have this type of genius, uh -huh. and this is what I'm, somebody is saying that all I'm worth, this is what I'm going to be good at. So when I uh, got back to stateside, we, uh, I was in Station Fort Lewis, 
uh, Washington, and I decided that I want to venture back into music. So I started my first company, which was called ResDad Incorporated. And that was recording music? Yes, a record label. And did you record your own music? I did. Um, I actually became my sole artist on a company for a while. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, that works. <laughs> yeah. Well, what it was is I was really frustrated with hearing a lot of native rappers. I wanted to hear uh -huh. more, more native rap, and that's how I started out. Uh, it was kind of an odd transition because historically I've been a, a metalhead into death metal, punk rock, all this stuff. But I figured, you know what? I don't got a band because uh, most people I meet, you know, try to form a band. Uh -huh. They just want to smoke weed all day or they want to drink all day or, or just talk about what they want to do. Uh -huh. I actually want to get and do it. I want to do it. And uh, so I figured, well, hip hop's easy. It's the easiest thing in the world. Like, it's like doing karaoke. I can do that, you know? And I figured I can rap, and I'm going to teach myself how to rap better than most of these jokers that are running around the street. Not to sound disrespectful, but I just felt like when you come from a mentality of, of like, I'm worth more, you have that mentality of, mm -hmm. like, I can do better. Right, right. And uh, so I just taught myself how to flow, how to rap, how to structure lyrics uh, in, a, in, a, in an organized sense that made sense. And uh, I started going out, pushing the idea of the label. Because I never wanted to be the, the star of the company. I never wanted to be, you know, the rapper, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just went out searching for artists, and I found uh, different artists, uh, like Mac Fox. I signed a guy named Mac Fox. Came from uh, the Midwest, and uh, Kickapoo Riz. And uh, so he was a big native dude. You know, that's what I wanted. I was okay. like, man, as a, as a native man, I want that. I want to look at a native brother who's tall, big, good looking, and, you know, when other non-natives look at him, they can say, it's a pretty cool guy. It's marketable, uh -huh, you know. Uh -huh. So then you started the magazine. We, hmm, it's kind of hard to answer <laughs> that question. We, you know what, it, it's, it's coming from the idea that um, when I tackle all these different things, I look at it with the, with the perspective that most people view indigenous people across the board mm -hmm. um, as simple-minded, one-dimensional, um, and, and, and that's it. So when we, when we do anything with the magazine company, we, go, we, we, we attack it with a punk rock attitude, a do-it-yourself attitude, of get it done, you know, don't rely on anybody else, let's make it happen. But we, we attack it with the idea that this has to be the world premiere. Everything we do is a world premiere. It's greater and larger than life. This is the thing that I, you know, because when I, when I look at it, I think about it when I'm a little kid, I, I travel back in time in my brain, and I'm a little <laughs> kid, I'm looking up at the TV, and I'm seeing um, Cowboys and Indians movies, and I'm looking at people, and, and this is the same thing that most people in, in, throughout Native America think. You know, you travel back in time and you say, I wish that could be me or I wish I could be a Native. Right, or, you right. know, or I wish I was at least, a, if that's a white guy playing a Native, I wish you could resemble a Native at the very <laughs> least, you know. And so we, we, we go with that mentality of Native entertainment is the world's greatest magazine. The world's greatest. And so when we, when we go out, we look for people that have something different. Unique. Somebody exactly yeah, unique. Yeah. We look for that diamond in the rough that may be overlooked or maybe the rest of Native American media is, is ignoring them because maybe they have tattoos or maybe they have a, 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 a facial modification. Wrong or, color. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so we, we go after these people, the people that most of Native America ignores. And we're like, all right, cool. Here's, here's Lucas Blackie. That's the guy. He's a race car driver. He's a tattoo artist. He's an ex-convict. Um, at one point in time, he was in prison, got out, changed his life, started his own tattoo shop, very successful, and then he became, he's a second-generation race car driver. So his father was a race car driver before him. He's a race car driver now. And we were like, man, this guy is amazing. We got to go out. We got to sponsor this guy. We have to. So when we look at that's people, really cool. we, we look at stuff like that. Yeah, and that's why we have Native Voice TV, because we yeah. thought we need a voice, too. Yeah, because we love what you guys do. You guys Thank are doing you. something that, that is unique. You're giving people a voice, and it's not just anybody can give somebody a voice, put a camera in front of their face, mm -hmm. but you guys are doing something in a very professional manner, and you guys, and I hate to say this, but you're not haters. There's a lot of magazine, uh, a lot of companies out there. We did yeah. an interview with Indian Country today. I sat down with the interview guy uh, over the phone and did an hour-long interview. We talked about having our Chuck Billy memorabilia in the hard rock ma making history we talked about all types of stuff and all they focused on is a one-sided thing and they made the article sound like as if we're exploiting native women as if native women are so dumb that they're just marching in here like they're a bunch of dodo birds and we're saying hey throw this sit on or throw uh -huh. the stuff on uh -huh. and and it's not like that people come to us looking for something unusual to do so 
you know, when you guys reached out to us, we were like, man, heck yeah, we're going to do this. Well, I was so impressed when I came here. You have your own store. I mean, it's such, it's, it's, it's a very impressive storefront. The, the interior, it's a nice store. Thank you. And you have native things in it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just brand, you opened up just recently, right? Yeah. Well, in, in order to describe what we do at the retail facility, we have to backtrack a little bit on what we've done historically as a company because it, it, it matters to what we have in here and what you see in the walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. So five years ago when we started, we started out of the house, just like everybody started sure, a company. Sure. We started out of the house, and for four years, we were out of the house. That's all we did. So for over, the first, over the course of the first four years, we grew just doing stuff out of the house. And... Over that course of the first four years, people were always coming to us saying, hey, how can I sell my stuff? They always thought we had a facility, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we were like, well, we're not a store. We don't have a place. We, you know. And uh, so when, when we actually decided to get a facility, we decided, you know what? We're going we're gonna to have a place that is a reflection of Hard Rock, like Hard Rock Cafe. Right, right. Because every time we've gone to Hard Rock Cafe, we, you know, you don't see natives on the wall in, in, in memorabilia or picture frames mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So... And that's what we wanted. If we said, well, if it's a native-owned company, why aren't there skins on the wall? Right. You know? and, and there's been a lot of kick-butt, watch my language, kick-butt <laughs> rock artists and all, uh, entertainers that have come through there. But yet you see um, Jimi Hendrix. And so even though a lot of people say, well, he was Cherokee or whatever else, you know, visually you're going to see him as a black guy. Mm -hmm. And that's what he is genetically. And so we decided when we have a store, we want a, a reflection of our people to put our people on a higher pedestal in a really cool way. And so that's why when you when you walk through the store, we have these cool shirts that are, you know, they're, they're not the normal type of shirts. Right, right. We have people on picture frames. We have people uh, just posted up. We have Chuck Billy's. This is the actual photo that was uh, the frame and photo magazine and everything that was in the hard rock. So we wanted to reflect that in this facility. It's it's really nice, very impressive. And then <laughs> you're you. going to be opening your, or you're launching your own perfume line. Yeah, the, actually, we the holiday season. Yeah, um, every year we uh, we we put out our we we started the the perfume line about five years ago. Um, it's called Indian Honey, and uh, every year around this time we put it back out for sale, and we do pretty good on sales. And it's it's mostly a novelty thing, you know, because uh -huh. um, it, it's just it, the idea of hey, here's a perfume, you know, yeah, native perfume. Yeah, a native perfume. And so we, we have uh, Indian honey. We're getting ready to launch it. We've been working on this for a little while. Uh, tribal passion, the native passion. Um, and native passion came out of the idea that a lot of native women say that native men ain't passionate. We're not romantic. <laughs> and, and, and that's across the board. You can say that about all men. It, but mm -hmm. it's just annoying when native females pinpoint native men and they say, oh, they're, and then they insert negative comment here, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. And uh, so, so the idea is coming from a native male perspective that uh, we are passionate. We're just as passionate as everybody else. But just like every man out there, we need women like you to teach us how to get in touch with our sensitive side. Because uh -huh. other than that, we're just barbarians. Every man on the planet, ah, mm, food, ah, love you, yes. Mm. Go outside now. <laughs> Make some fried bread. Make some fried bread. Mm. <laughs> so what are your future plans for the magazine? I see you're always growing, which is wonderful. And it's always in a very positive way to promote native people in, you know, in different areas. Um, as far as the retail facility is concerned, we would like to have franchises, um, not only just in the United States, but all over the world, um, with stuff that is made primarily by indigenous people. We want to put money back into indigenous people's hands. Good. It's, it's no good to us if, if some white guy or black guy is, is saying, here, I made some native stuff. Oh, cool. Great. Hollywood's doing that, too. Mm -hmm, you know? Exactly. We want to put money in your pocket, in your hand. We want to see billionaires, native billionaires. We want to encourage the, the – when people come in here, we want them to be so proud that they're native, to be able to, as a native female, to look at another native man and say, oh, I want to hook up with that dude. As a ma native male, to see another native male and say – I mean, uh, another – uh, vice versa, you know what I mean, <laughs> to look at them and be able to say, I want to hook up, right? Cause so it's going to be like a chain of native entertainment magazines, like the Hard Rocks, but that will be Native Rocks? <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 that, in that capacity, yeah. <laughs> we just want to encourage people to be able to say, without sounding corny, but to be, to be able to come in and be able to say, dang, some cool stuff, whether they're native or not. Mm -hmm. To be able to come mm -hmm. in and be able to appreciate us for who we are, because in our facility, you will, well, we're trying really hard. 
um, to not have any type of stereotypical stuff. We don't want to exploit the culture in any way. So you're never going to see a female with um, war paint and buckskin stuff and whatever else. To us, that's exploiting the culture. Mm -hmm. That's exploiting our race. And there's enough people in Hollywood doing that. There's enough non-natives doing that. Right. Um, and we don't want to do that. So we're showcasing people in suits and ties, um, shirts just like this. Regular people. Regular people doing stuff. People have tats on their neck. Lucas Black, you were talking about him earlier. He's a tattoo artist. He got, he's just inked yeah, up. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's inked up. And uh, he has some really cool artwork. And, uh, you know, so we want the stores to be found uh, globally. As a magazine company, we want to challenge companies like Rolling Stone and Maxim for their number one spot. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing pretty good so far because nationally we have a 47% sell-through rate. Normally, even, even the top magazines have a 35 to 45% sell-through rate. We have a 47% sell-through rate. Um, and that is verified through our distribution company, which verifies a lot of stuff through uh, mm -hmm. ABC. Right. Um, and uh, so we always, we're always looking to expand on everything that we want to do. One of, the, one of the things in the future, because we, we do work on a lot of TV, because, uh, because, and I don't mean to get long-winded here, but like Native Entertainment is is just it's not just a magazine; it's this full-fledged media company. It might sound it might sound too, my heads might be too far in the clouds, but I would love to own my own satellite, a Native Entertainment satellite. That would be wonderful. Yes. Then we'll broadcast Native Voice TV from your satellite. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you're going to have your own community television show uh, soon, right? You're already online. Yeah, yeah. We're working on it right now. We're, what we're doing is just we're taking care of all the little nuts and bolts, and mm -hmm. we're making sure that we can actually shoot a uh, full season with regular people and get everything booked up and everything taken mm -hmm. care of. Uh, but right now we're online. Uh, we've been online for several years through a, a, a TV network that we call Res TV, And uh, uh, we just uh, put together shows. All right, we've done a lot of late night TV style shows mm -hmm. and stuff, um, but we're we're also we've done like interview stuff, interviews where it's segmented between like let's say you're sitting here doing the interview and then the the band comes on later. It was it was actually modeled after um, Guitar Center's sessions, mm -hmm. and because uh, we really liked the way it looked, it was really professional, it was really well put together, and I love hearing personally from a musical standpoint. I love hearing musicians tell their stories. Uh -huh. You know, I was watching. Uh -huh. um, Social distortion. I was uh, this, this um, Mike Ness. He was talking about um, all the trials and tribulations he's been through, right? And I like that. And that's one of the things that we're we're continuously looking for to pull the meat out of people, because normally people will sit here and they'll say, "Well, I do it for the people," uh -huh. and that's BS. You do it because you're vain. You do it because you want, <laughs> you want money in your pocket. You do it because it feels great. You do it because you love music. Mm -hmm. You know, you do it like like a Skylar Wolf. He, he's had a lot of trials and tribulations. He's been on the street. He's a native dude. He could have lived a regular native life, a regular Navajo life. Lived, he could have just stayed on, stayed on the res, done whatever he's doing, or just, or just live a regular life. But he's doing something so unusual. And, and people, people look at him and judge him because of it. We look at him and we judge him with, in a positive light and say, That's right. yeah, yeah, do your thing. And now he's studying to be a nurse. There you go. So, you know, it can be professional. We can do it all. Yeah, exactly. Right? Now, I noticed that you, you said something about um, that you, you're training people to be um, interviewers mm -hmm. and commentators and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so you're working with younger people, youth kind of uh, mentoring? Well, what it is is uh, we're not so much mentoring youth and mentoring people to get into their – to start a business or anything. Um, <clears throat> what we're doing is we, we bring people in and we educate them. Okay. So – if somebody, because we're, we're, we're all, it's a selfish need, because we have to fuel the machine. So the machine needs a beautiful woman to interview a guy, and so on and so forth. And uh, so what we do is when people come in, usually they're just one dimensional. It's either like they're either just a model or something. And so what we teach them is to push your brain, mm -hmm. crack your brain open, push the cobwebs off, change the way you see things, change the way you see yourself, and, and push yourself to become something more and greater and and they do, and when they come in there, they're, they're a lot of times they're expecting to just do some modeling. And what uh -huh. they do is beyond that, they're training to sit down here and talk and do an interview. To they're, develop the skills that you exactly. have. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of times we're, especially when, when native females. What, what I this is a mentality that I have. It's it's based on studying psychology and sociology. 
women, native women have what I call, suffering from what I have, or what I call the Pocahontas syndrome. Hollywood has taught us that native women are sexy and smart and native men are barbarians. We've heard this before. And you can see it when you look at, uh, when you look at cinema. You always see the non-native guy, native, and then you, the, for some reason the female is always this full-blooded native woman, right? And that's always the way it is. So as, mm-hmm. from a male perspective, I see that and I'm thinking, all right, cool, so I'm not valuable in society. I'm not needed, I'm not wanted. And then when a native female sees that, she sees that and thinks, see, Pocahontas is sexy. Everybody wants me. And, <laughs> and so that's the mentality that they have. So when they, go, when they become native models, that's what they come in here with. We come in here, and I shatter their world. I'm like, no, you're not a Pocahontas. You're not the center of the world. You're not the greatest. You're not any more sacred than a black woman or a white woman. But you are a beautiful woman, and you're talented. Mm-hmm. So let's do some cool stuff together. And we're here with Tito Gutierrez. He's the CEO of Native Entertainment Magazines, and he has a lot of ventures. We've been talking about <laughs> all your your store, your sponsorship of the race car, and just your how your magazine began. And you were saying it started back with with had another name. Yeah, it didn't have another name. But what happened is over the uh, like I was saying earlier, I started 15 years ago, and when I started the record label, I, ha- I had signed an artist called Mac Fox. I wanted to promote Mac Fox in a way nobody else was doing. So I decided to create a magazine called Mafia Magazine. Oh, okay. And it was a, an all hip-hop magazine, all native hip-hop. Uh-huh. And um, so I did that for a little while, uh, put out a couple of issues, and we were blessed enough to have Taboo from Black Eyed Peas appear as a feature story. Wow. Uh, we had Booyah Tribe, legendary Bay Area gangster rappers from out in California. Um, where they came through. Um, we also had Mac Fox on the cover, and obviously the whole point is to promote him. And uh, <clears throat> so I did that, ended it, and went on with other ventures. So I fast forward to the future, and it's five years ago, and uh, that's when we started Native Entertainment Magazine uh, with the idea of Mafia Magazine, but expanding on it to not just Native uh-huh. Hip Hop, to all genres. And since there was no magazine really that focused on on really cool music, really you know stuff that what it, normally you get magazines publications out there that just focus on drum, flute, uh, powwow stuff. Right, you know? right. And and uh, you know while that's great, I love my culture, love my heritage. I like to jam out. Mm-hmm. I like the headbang. I like to bob my head when I'm listening to Brother Lynch Hung or you know stuff like that. And so the idea is, was to showcase all these native entertainers from around the way that were doing this unusual type of music, or what would be viewed as unusual. And um, the same thing with actors and models and so on and so forth. We wanted the place for them to have yeah. what that they can call home. So who works with you closely on uh, the planning, the carrying out of your, your business? Sabrina Castillo is the uh, managing director, general manager of the company. She's the backbone. She's the person I war with all the time to make sure. I knew there'd be a woman in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. and, and that's the thing. We always encourage people uh-huh. to, to do different things. You know, if you're a woman, stand up and, and right. don't just say you're a strong native woman. Show it. And that's mm-hmm. what she, she does. Good. So she's always pushing me to, to do, you know, not think just like a guy, but think from the other side as well so that we can make a well-rounded company. And it's wonderful to be here in Albuquerque. And thank you so much, Tito, for letting us use your studio. I love your studio here. Well, I appreciate you guys stopping by. You guys came a long ways. You guys are more than welcome to come back anytime in the future. You guys, This is your home now. Thank you. We'll be back. <laughs> Look forward to it. Thank you for joining us at home. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to like Native Entertainment Magazine on Facebook, Native Voice TV on Facebook, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Mm-hmm.